What does this word mean? Well, what does it mean to be iconic? Unfortunately, I don't know, but what I do know is that this picture of Jonah Hill and Chief Keef standing around is iconic. This tweet by Cher, unsurprisingly, very iconic. Adam Sandler's click, say it with me, iconic. But there's one thing out there which leaves all of these examples in comparison look about as iconic as some old white person doing the dab, and that is Club Penguin. Now, before all of you Toontown supremacists hop on my case being like, oh, Club Penguin is stupid. Oh, shut up, shut up. I'll get to Toontown someday, all right? Shut up. For all the senior citizens watching this video, aka people over 25, who happened to grow up in the medieval ages without technology and instead had to resort to lobbing rocks at their peers for entertainment, let me give you a quick introduction. Club Penguin was an MMO targeted to kids about yay big, and prior to its release, there were a few predecessors made by the original creators like Experimental Penguins, where you had the ability to walk around in a white void while contemplating the option of putting an end to your miserable existence on this planet. Following this, we got Penguin Chat 2 and 3, and don't ask me, where's Penguin Chat 1? I, I don't know. Then Kanye tweeted, fuck all this dick swinging contest, we all gonna be dead in a hundred years, let the kids have the penguin. And thus, Club Penguin was released to the public, and people went fucking berserk. Like, I can imagine kids were probably beating up their parents to get access to their work computers in order to play Club Penguin. And you know what they say, if there's kids, there's everyone's favorite child predator, Mickey Mouse ready with his wallet. Oh, and and they've bought it. They 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 already bought it. Shit. Following its arrival at the Mickey Mouse Clubhouse, we saw Club Penguin broaden its horizons to many mediums, including books, like anyone who played this game knew how to fucking read, and Nintendo DS games. Now these games at the time to me seemed like the most incredible thing that this universe has ever come out with. Uh, but unfortunately, these games came out around the same time that my mom saw me behead a prostitute on GTA Vice City. Uh, so uh, video games were not really allowed in our house anymore. So what could you actually do in this game? Well, it's best summed up by the motto of the game, waddle around and meet new friends, but it went way deeper than that. This world felt genuinely alive, like you wanna go snow tubbing with your friends? Fuck! You wanna fucking, you don't wanna toss pizzas? Yeah, that's cool by me. Or, or do you wanna go to the pizza place and pick up some chicks? Cause that is the hottest dating place in town. Fucking stupid ass bitch! These games had a lot of underage dating. A lot of it. The world also contained a ton of activities, whether it be mini games or lobbing snowballs at some dumb little kid. Mini games would help you rake in the dough, which in return would help you invest in clothing. And the fashion in this game was incredible. These penguins were serving looks right, left, and center. You were also able to pimp out your igloos like everyone would start off with this embarrassing shack, but then after a hard day of grinding away in the mines, you could work your way up to this. You know, my hands would look like this so that her hands could look like this. And in case you were wondering, hey, what is <laughs> what is that shit on your floor? That's a Puffle. You put some respect on that Puffle's name, boy. Puffles were the in-game pets that, you know, you had to take care of, or, you no, know, you didn't really have to take care of them at all. You could just leave them to die. Nobody cared. There would be different kinds of Puffles. Like, for example, the black one would be the really edgy, cool skateboarding one. And the pink one would be the Puffle equivalent of... Here's the motherfucking... I mean, Puffles were cool, I guess. You could take him out for walks and shit, but they also brought along one of the worst minigames in the history of humanity. What the fuck? What? Get in there! What the- Oh? Oh? What? What? Similar to, like, every single one of these kids' games, most of the content was stuck behind the paywall, meaning if you didn't have this badge on your profile, you were a subspecies piece of trash. But I will admit that Club Penguin treated its peasants better than most games, because occasionally they would throw a box of shit on the ground, like a box of hard hats. And there were also tons of activities for non-members, like hard jitsu. Holy shit. At this point, I hate using the word epic, because we've kind of gone past the ironic phase and it's just annoying again, but hard jitsu was epic. You had to kick other penguins' asses all the while being guided by this creepy old man to make your way up top to the black belt and become a car jitsu ninja. Or maybe you were a bit more of a secret agent type of guy, which I, I can respect. So why don't you come join the penguin agent, uh, what is it called? 
Penguin secret agency, come join the pe In the agency, there would be these missions which you were able to do, but I, it's been like seven million years no! since I did these, so I can't remember what happens in them. All I remember is that they were fucking insane. So you have this bald guy with glasses, a scientist type of guy giving you the intel, like you gotta go in and execute this polar bear. Cause there was this polar bear named Herbert who was a massive fucking asshole, he was fucking shit up. Why don't we check in with Herbert nowadays? Oh wait, he's fucking dead because of climate change. Change. How embarrassing. All in all, these missions followed a concurrent theme in the game, which was that they were awesome. As a kid, this game always found a way to keep me excited for the next update and make me log on every day to waddle around and meet new friends. One of my most fond memories as a kid was having the adults around me translate the Penguin Times for me, a weekly in-game newspaper which talked about what was going on in the world of Club Penguin. Cause your boy was radiating a ton of dumb bitch energy and did not know how to speak English. The most exciting times though, were when everyone's favorite deadbeat dad, Rockhopper, would come to town. Rockhopper was a self-proclaimed pirate, even though everyone in reality knew that he was just an alcoholic. He would show up like once every six months, just to fuck off again in a few days, but his arrival was always very electrifying. He would show up in this massive fuck-off pirate ship, and you'd be able to tell if he was coming by using the telescope on top of the lighthouse. Watching this guy's ship edge closer and closer to the shores day by day was incredibly exciting. <laughs> In conclusion, I have a lot of love for this game. I think the developers put a lot of heart and soul into making it, and there were so many neat little details, like for example, watching the fish stack up one by one as you were catching them, or being able to interact with the little things in the environment. The art style of this game as well, mm, beautiful. But I'm sure as you all know, this game was shut down by Disney in 2017, ending the life of yet another kid's MMO, and at this point, we're kinda starting to run out of them, so if you guys could stop closing down my my childhood games, that would just be fantastic. Club Penguin's legacy lives on, because Club Penguin Island's legacy sure as shit is not. I mean, that, that was garbage. Goodbye, everyone.